Hey guys, I'm gonna do just something a little different. Uh, this is actually a takeoff from Uncle Tony because I thought he did a good job on it and even I learned something when he was showing how to clean cylinder heads. I'm just gonna show you how I do it. In reality, I do it in my parts washer, but I decided to try it the way he would do it, meaning that he's like a low buck guy, right? So we are following his directions as far as Basically, barbecue cleaner. Now, <clears throat> what do you need to know about this stuff? It says no caustic fumes. Guess what? It's only going to work if it's an acid or a caustic. I'm going to bet it's a caustic. Okay? Why are they... Okay, that's in Spanish. No wonder why I can't read it. Okay, water butane... C911 alcohols, extolated propane, that's the propellant, sodium citrate, which is an acid, sodium carbonate, I don't know if that's, I think that's an acid, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, tetrasodium glutamate dicetate citric acid. More, for more, in, more ingredient information, visit simplegreen.com. Okay, so it's not caustic, it's an acid. Acid, I believe, is a low number on the pH scale. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to spray this, let it sit. I'll pause the camera. I will show you, actually, I'll, I'll show you where I scrub and how I scrub. There's only a couple things I need. An old toothbrush. This is the only thing that's dedicated to basically uh, engine stuff, would be a, a guide brush. And in reality, you should scrape the gaskets beforehand. A good, a good gasket scraper makes a big difference. Okay. Now, as far as safety, you need gloves, you need goggles. You don't want to get this stuff on you. And in reality, this only takes a couple bucks to do it. Parts washer is a little more, a little more pricey, and the uh, the cleansers for the parts washers are pretty pricey. And I'm trying to speak loud and clear because I realize the phone is all the way over there. I'm usually right behind it. But it'll either be a complete failure as usual. Well, you guys will get something out of it. Now I can feel a little bit of this on my hand right now, but it's not burning. I've worked with caustic and acids before, and uh, I usually know right away when it's got on me. The worst is when it gets you right in the front of your pants. That's a bad day, but it does happen. Okay, well, why are we cleaning these? Well, I certainly can't bring them to, to, to DVs completely filthy like they are. You got to remember, you know, these have had how many hours of grinding? And iron dust is incredibly... <sighs> it gets everywhere, let's put it that way. Now, we're going to use shower because we don't want to use... We don't want to use jet because we don't want it to squirt back in our faces. So shower is the way to go. Okay. Now I'm just going to get a little of this off my hands, which I'm going to wind up flipping these and I'll have to rinse my hands again. Now, the problem with doing this next to a white wall is when I finally spray all this, it's going to cover everything with iron dust. 
and make rust, and I'll probably have to paint this wall because my wife will crab about it. But if I rinse it really well, it may not be bad. Okay, the can wants to be vertical, otherwise you don't get anything out, like most aerosol cans. Okay. Don't be afraid to get in there with the old toothbrush and give everything a good scrub, which is really what it needs. Now these actually need a tiny bit of epoxy work on the pinch, because the way these heads are designed, the pinch isn't completely straight. It has a a neck down at the very top. And if you watch DV's original video on doing the open chambers, he blew a hole through it. Well, I was I was following his design, and I think one or two ports, I, I did the exact same thing. So these are gonna need a little epoxy work. I haven't been able to find my epoxy. I have it somewhere. If not, I'll have to do it at DV's because it's, it's running late already. And uh, today's Sunday, we want to be on the road early Monday. So I may not have a chance to, to epoxy them here. In any case, they need to be cleaned before you epoxy, right? Anytime you're using epoxy, the area has to be super clean. No grease, no oil, no nothing like that. No dirt, okay? Any dirt is not gonna add to its adhesion. Okay. Now, as far as boring videos go, this has got to be in the top 10. Watching somebody scrub a cylinder head with a toothbrush. Idiotic, right? Well, guess what? There's some younger guys that don't have a ton of money that would like to build up stuff and actually have it run fast and good don't have a ton of money so this kind of does remind me of my childhood did I use oven cleaner yes I did back in the day I also used a couple other things I mean it depends on what I could get my hands on you know something like lacquer thinners used to work good because uh, it good degreaser right uh, back we used to have the jugs of simple grain which were pretty good actually was before I had my parts washer. After you get the parts washer, this is kind of mute, you know, a moot point at that point. Now, I did leave, I did leave Dykem in one of these ports because I wanted DV to look at it and see what's going on there. Because a lot of the battle with, with these heads was the liquid flow. And we did compromise mass flow a little bit trying to get a little better liquid control which I think is going to pay off especially with the small carburetor not so much with the big the bigger carburetor if it has a good boosted design then again you're also dropping the airspeed by a lot going to a big carburetor I'm sure there's lots of guys that say you can't run a 750 on a 318. I beg to differ. Now, will it lose some street manners? Sure. How do you fix that? Well, good tuning will fix a lot of it. Okay, proper manifold prep will make a big difference. Booster design has got a huge amount to do with it, whether it's a, a vacuum secondary or a double pumper. All these things matter. I'm not the carb guy, believe me. I'm not the carb guy. I'm a fuel injection guy. I like to be able to go on the laptop and give it a little more accelerator pump or change the timing at that curve. But you gotta remember, the old school stuff I'm used to, you type in the wrong numbers into that program and that, that engine will eat itself in short order. 
I did. I did do that once. I think I was running too much timing because I didn't know as much about timing as I know today, right? The more efficient you make the chamber, less timing advance you're gonna need. Well, obviously I had a pretty good chamber compression design, good quench, and I set up the first run with a little too much timing. I don't think I got two miles and it developed a rod knock. No pinging, but it had a problem. Now this is a very important part, guys. Okay, getting the guides super clean. Don't be don't be afraid to really work on the guides. We don't want any dirt in them. Okay, it also makes a, a difference the way we blow these out because it's iron. <laughs> they basically rust instantly. Okay. So right after you're done with it, you got to hit them with the air compressor and a, a nozzle. Blow every, every nook and cranny out. And in a lot of cases, you may be doing this more than once. Now this is not the final cleaning on this, these, so they're only going to get cleaned once. I'm not going to show you the 9 degrees because it's going to be the same deal. Do I have to show you more than one head? Probably not. I probably should just finish this one and call it a day on this video because you know how much I hate long boring videos. What else do we have to talk about as far as this? Even where the push rods go, right? Clean that out. Bolt holes. I usually tap all my bolt holes and make them clean that way, but bolt holes in the head this way. If you have garbage in them and you go to, and you don't clean it and you go to assemble it, you'll get garbage in your threads. That'll screw up your torque. Not a good thing. Now, Chrysler's got an oil galley that goes through the head somewhere. Right? It's got an intersecting. It's got an intersecting hole this way right here get that oil galley make sure that's clean because you don't want to pump dirty filthy oil into your new rockers and stuff this brush is a little big for that we'll hit that with a smaller brush spark plug holes need to get done And it does make your hands nice and clean. Kind of like doing the dishes for Whiffy, right? Yeah, that could happen someday. <sighs> Don't get old, guys. Being bent over too long, getting up, not a good time. In reality, I probably could wash these again and we'd still get a ton of dirt out of these. But I don't think you guys want to watch that. So, what do we do next? You bring it over to the air compressor, you blow out every hole. When you do that, make sure you got goggles on because if there's any dirt, it flies into your eye, it'll be full of acid. It'd be a bad day. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. 